Hey, people, Zar Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 52 of The Greatest Attorney 2 Resolve. Last time, we finished up the, invest the first investigative portion of this case, and now we are moving on to the trial section. Let's go. We are representing Van Zeeks, and we are moving out. The crushing presence of this, of this historical courthouse. Actually, no. It's a little different today. There is an even more menacing tension in the air. There's a menacing tension in the air here today, isn't there? I suppose. Yes, I think so. I'm right here, you know, my lad, Nipponese friend. It can only be the result of the menacing appearance of the defendant. A little more courtesy, if you please. Oh my, I, I do apologize. I understand that courtesy is a foreign concept to your people, but please, try to exercise some. I know you can do it. However, you're, you're certainly not mistaken that this trial is far from ordinary. What do you mean? I'm not privy to the details. However, I understand that no jury has been selected. I'm screwed now. Oh, the one time, the one time they decide, oh, we're going to get rid of the jury. We're not going to have the summation examinations. It's the trial that I'm the defendant. Oh, come on. Why is this, why is fate laughing at me? The one time I want a summation examination to save my ass. A trial without a jury? Well, well, that's just like... The trial of the professor ten years ago. A closed court. Good morning, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes. Have you made no to my amis in Arudo? An outright victory for science, you must agree. I am no longer hideous. To be perfectly honest, so much happened yesterday that, well, I completely forgot about your little hair problem. Ah! What to one man is a little air problem is to another a day of drinking dubious potions after dubious potion. One of Iris's potions turned me into a frog man. You have no idea how much my stomach ails me this morning. Oh dear, how awful for you. I'm afraid you only have yourself to blame, Mr. Sholmes. And good morning to you, Mr. Reaper. I'm delighted to see you looking so full of vim. Well, on the other, on the contrary, I am not pleased to see you. Yes, yes, let's make this worse. Okay, what, what next? What next? Are we going to dig up my brother's dead body and put him on trial next? And I see you. I see London's celebrated great detective is as active as ever. Oh, you exaggerate, my dear fellow. Compared to my paltry engagements with a few trivial cases, the Reaper's overbearing presence is a far greater deterrent to the black roots of crime in our capital. And whilst I may not agree with your methods, there is at least one point on which I should readily commend you. What an honor, and what would that be? Your eye for a good lawyer, sir. M Mr. Sholmes. After all, beneath this lawyer, there's a very great mind, my own. What are you trying to say? That Iris is, that I've been manipulating him from the background. And by extension, Iris has been manipulating me. Iris controls the entire legal system. Mr. Reaper, you should take note of that. If she ever demands something of you, you do it. You ask her how you can you can make it easier for her. I wish only to say that you should be prepared for quite a trial, Mr. Reaper. I am uh, my ba my eye is already rising. Well, there goes my blood pressure. Sorry to bar I don't know who's speaking. Sorry, Barjin. Gina. What's that on her arm? It's a morning band, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Bruno. You, you're right, Odo. We, we had, uh, we had, we had the boss's funeral procession this morning. We, we, get, we took him throughout the East End. We let Nash and Ring go out of jail to celebrate the brother's death. They say they would sing Amazing Grace as we rock through the streets. Father, shouldn't you be at the symposium? It's been postponed, so I had some free time. 
I decided to come along with the police inspector to see our country's up and coming student action. I shall be very interested to see the fruits of your studies over the past year. Yeah, well, good thing that, well, good thing there is no jury, because otherwise, you, you would be like, okay, that's been the fifth submission examination, okay? This is no, this is going nowhere. Well, it's an art have you there. Let's hope there are some fruits to see. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Gina? Why'd you agree to this, eh? Why'd you take him on? This, this Reaper bloke, everyone says it was him, what? What killed the boss? I'm sorry, Gina. But I just don't believe that. Well, if it weren't him, who was it? I don't know that yet. I don't care who, care who calls him what. The Reaper's just a name. He's just a person at the end of the day. And if it turns out it was him who killed the boss, then God help him. He better give his heart to God, cause his ass will be mine. The East End will eat him up. We're gonna, we'll sacrifice him to the East End. We'll sacrifice him to the sewer rats. The sewer rats will be appeased. Fiery eyes indeed. Yes, the culprit deserves every ounce of your loathing. Eh? At least that may be some solace to the deceased. P please, Odo. Get whoever did this for the boss. Oh, Tina. I ain't feeling this useless, but there's nothing I can do. So you gotta go and find who done this and make the wretch pay! Council for the defense and the defendant! Court will be in session shortly! Make your way to the courtroom at once, please! Alrighty then, here we go! It's time, Mr. Naruto! Lord Van Zeeks! One, one who lost his treasured brother to a mass murderer. One who lost his treasured father in a foreign court of law. And Gina. And one who lost the man who helped her escape desti destitution. All that misfortune, all that pain, on course to collide headlong in this trial. It's time to shine a light on all these dark events. And whatever truth is revealed, we're going to have to look at look it straight in the eye. Second of November, nine twenty a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here to conduct the fair and just trial of the defendant, Barack Venzi. Counsel of the defense and prosecution, are you ready to begin? The defense is ready, my lord. The prosecution is more than ready. You think you can one-up me, Ryu Nasuke? Because I'll one-up you. Oh, Kazuma-sama! I've been wait wishing to see you in court again for so long, it feels. But I never pictured it happening like this. I never thought I'd be facing you behind the prosecution's bench. The so-called Reaper of the Bailey has been a scourge like no other, undermining Her Majesty's justice system. Today, we must uncover the truth behind this scourge. In other words, this trial is going to be a lot more far-reaching than Inspector Gregson's murder. The truths revealed by this proceeding by these proceedings may have unpredictable repercussions throughout the judiciary. Accordingly, they are to be conducted as a closed trial with no members of the public present. By your Majesty's direct orders. How will that work, my lord? The, the burden of all arbitration and education falls on my shoulders. No submission examinations for you. Therefore, as you will see. The jurors' bench shall remain vacant today. If no members of the public are present, might I ask who is currently occupying the gallery, my lord? 
They are members of the judiciary, here to witness proceedings and ensure an equitable trial. Members of the judiciary. Oh my, this is a very unusual trial already. There is another, there is of course another unprecedented aspect to the proceedings on which I must elaborate. The counsels of the prosecution and the defense are both aliens of Great Britain. I believe it takes an outsider to see the truth sometimes. And I, as I stand here in this courtroom now, I'm quite certain. This is the reason why I had to come to Britain. Kazuma. Very well, let's commence proceedings. Rossiura hey, Sogi, your opening statement, if you please. Certainly, my lord. The incident took place on the 1st of November at just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The location was a building of flats uh, was a building of flats on Forenzo Street on the outskirts of the city. The victim's body was discovered there in an old single room rental property. Yes, Inspector Tobias Gregson, a name known very well indeed to this court. We miss you, Sulky. Not least for his miraculous resolution of one of this country's grimmest cases ten years ago. The Professor case? How sure are you about the time of the incident? Several witnesses on the street outside heard the gunshot and all, and all have reported at the same time. Yes, that's what Gina told us too. There was a number of witnesses. I have here the play of the room. The victim was found girl up in one corner. It's believed that he was shot from the front at point-blank range and died instantaneously. Hmm, how was the range been determined? There were scorch marks around the entry wound. And while we're at it, do you want me to give you a tutorial on ballistic markings? They're the fingerprints of a gun. Such marks are caused by the gunpowder used to fire the bullets. But powder hot enough to leave scorch marks is only ejected a few inches beyond the end of the barrel. In other words, it only happens when the target is at point-blank range. I see, yes. Thank you for the detailed explanations, Counsel. The autopsy was added. The murder weapon was found lying beside the victim. And have you managed to ascertain the owner of this firearm? No, my lord. Not conclusively. Bravo, Kazuma-sama, for not trying to use the gun as evidence when it's pr when its provenance can't be proven. And then meanwhile, Vanzix, Oh, so this is what I taught you! E excuse me? Oh, you're like, you know! I taught you how to use evidence properly. You say that the gun was the murder weapon, and you fight for that until the last breath. You fight for it, and you call the defense crazy for fighting against you. You are ashamed of my teachings. I this is helping your case, Lord Vanzix. Well, who am I to just stand by and let you sully my teachings? Furthermore, my lord, as I explained, the revolver was fired at ex extremely close range. The bullet passed through the victim and struck the wall behind him. There was a, candela a candelabrum mounted on the wall, and the tip of one of the candles in it was found to have been blown out by the projectile. We know that too, didn't we? Yes, that's right. Thank you for the thorough report, counsel. The setting of the crime is clear to me. You will submit the plan of the crime scene as evidence, please. As you wish, my lord. The crime scene has been added. Hooray! Is this Fresno Street room inspe- uh, Is this Fresno Street room Inspector Gregson's private abode? Is it his sex den? No, my lord. The room is rented to Mr. Hugh Moon. But there is little furniture inside and is, ge is, and is generally in a poor state of repair. So what on earth was Gregson even doing there? Presumably he was investigating some case or another, or hiding from Iris. When a policeman was aboard of the gunshot from the witnesses and rushed to the scene, he found only the deceased inspector and the accused standing alongside, holding the revolver. The attending officer arrested the accused on the spot. So, the details of the case are clear. In that case, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. A name, please, counsel? The ma the invisible man who only tells the truth. Naturally, the accused himself. L Lord Van Zeeks. 
As a prosecutor, he believes in the oath of office he's taken and will be compelled to tell the truth. Very well, let the defendant take the witness stand. So, witness, state your name and occupation for the court. You all know my name and you know my occupation. I'm the freaking Reaper of the Bailey. You, and even your, even the children know who I am. In fact, I believe that there is a, that there are urban legends about me, how I am the boogeyman. They say that I, parents scare children by telling them that I hide in their closets and will take them away if they are bad. Barack Van Zeeks, Old Bailey Prosecutor, and fame and renowned author for my best-selling book, Fighting the Rising Sun, my eternal struggle against the Nipponese threat, the Nipponese menace. I presume, I presume, Lord, I presume, Lord Van Zeeks, that you heard Prosecutor Soki's opening priestess. He is no prosecutor. I did. He doesn't wear a badass badge. He doesn't wear a cleanse badge. It is alleged that you were about to see the crime and that you were arrested by the Iraqi police officer. Can you infer confirm this? Yes, my lord. Then I'm sure the court would like to hear you explain some things away. Namely, why you were there in the room on Fresno Street at the time in question and what exactly took place. I intend to explain away nothing. I will simply tell the truth. I must say, Lord Venzix, I never imagined this day would come. Or rather, I didn't want to imagine it would come. But since you became known as the Reaper, a part of me has been dreading it. Your formal testimony then, witness. I was investigating Gregson, and my inquiries had led me to that address. I knew that Gregson was giving information to my Latin Nipponese friend. This is how he was learning facts that helped him beat me in all those trials. And darn it, I am getting to the bottom of this. I was ensuring that he would not use another summation examination against me, because God help me, if I had to deal with another one of those, I would snap. When I first entered the room that day, it was dark inside and I saw no one. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Just as I picked up the firearm to examine it, the door blew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. That testimony was the whole truth? It was. So, you heard a shot being fired in a room with no living occupants. And moments later, a corpse somehow appeared before your eyes. Is that it? You're right. You haven't explained away anything. In fact, that would barely qualify as an excuse. I thought you were my mute apprentice. Yet it turns out you have a way with words. Prosecutor uh, Sogi, my learned... Frankly, I would have loved it if basically Van Zeeks would have just said something along the lines of My learned Nipponese prosec... Learned Nipponese prosecutor. Hmm, it would appear to be a singular tale indeed. Singular isn't the word, it's laughable. You're laughable. What's going into Kazuma? He's not behaving like himself at all. Very well then. Counsel, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, my lord. Cross examination time. Hold it! You were investigating the inspector? Why on earth for? I'm not at liberty to say. Sorry? I had identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in a case I was investigating. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. Is the court to understand, then, that on the day in question you followed the victim to the scene? No, I was privy to his movements in advance. 
How? I stole into his office in the yard and consulted his diary. I knew all his secrets, such as his fear, such as his fear of puffy clouds, as well as his desire to buy an abflexer. The address of Fresno Street was known in the 5 p.m. entry. You illegally entered the man's office. In Japan, that alone would constitute a very serious offense. Oh, 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 you're putting me to your Nipponese standards? Oh, don't make me laugh. As does in Great Britain, I assure you. Is that, is that not the case, Louis Physics? Don't you compare our cultures. I was aware of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim, and yet, you refused to tell the court why. I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoy such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. And I didn't realize that Nipponese prosecutors felt at such liberty to badger the witnesses. I'm oh, sorry, I actually skipped over reading the suitcase text. Ugh, why did everything I could defend this man? He's learning my techniques, my little Nipponese friend! He, look at this! He's already stereotyping! He's learning! He's developing! He's going to adapt before you know it, you know it, you'll have all my techniques! Hold it! Uh, had you ever been to the address before? No, never. I only learned to the place as a result of my investigations into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all impossible to make out anything. Oh, by the way, did you know that Gregson, he has a thing where he basically will ta he'll take an hour out of his way to walk around town before going home in order to ensure that he's not being followed by, and I quote when I say this, Assa her ladyship's assassin. What does I even mean? By 5 p.m., the sun would only have just gone down. It would still have been reasonably light outside. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut. Very little light found its way into the room from outside, so it was exceptionally, extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed that the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no artificial light in the room, you say. You're quite sure. I'm quite sure that the part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I can't say for certain. Look, Mr. Naruto. There's a small desk in the there's a small desk in the room just here. Yes, I remember. And there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and stared towards the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. Hold it! So, who fired the gun? I have no idea. I didn't see anybody else in the room. But you say it was very dark in there. Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is I didn't sense another's presence. I should know I have the powers of the vampire. I suck the blood from my victims and I can see the souls and the bot beats. I have good night vision. Ah, could, then could it be? You sparkle in the daylight? Yes, I sparkle in the daylight. That the gunshot actually originated from somewhere outside the room? No, that's out of the question. Oh? Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. Ugh, this is going from bad to worse. And you say that the point of, at which you noticed the revolver on the floor. Correct, and I foolishly picked it up. That was carelessly on my part. Presumably then, the gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took in your head. In or in fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold, and there was no smell of spent powder. But, but then, where on earth is the gun that was fired? 
Whilst I would like to oblige you with an answer, I'm very afraid I can't, too. Would dearly like to have known that. Ah. Uh. Okay, screw man. A man, you say? One of the witnesses, I presume? That's right. One of the street merchants working on Fresno Street. Who are these merchants? A number of them had sat at their stalls directly beneath the board window at the crime scene. A match dealer, a newsmonger, and a peddler. They're all given statements saying they, they heard the gunshot. And without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Yes, Gina told us about that yesterday, didn't she? They burst the door with some force, it would seem. They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. But you're supposed to be the Reaper. The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. Before I could pop a cap in his ass, a policeman patrolling the, on Fresno Street heard the commotion and was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyways, the man's scream drew my attention in that direction. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. Ah, darn it. So that's Lord Van Zeke's account. Do you have any thoughts, Mr. Naruto? Yes, mainly that it really doesn't ring true in all, in, a, in all sorts of ways. Who fired the gun if no one else was there? And how did the corpse just appear in front of him? So, you think Lord Anseese is lying? No, I don't think that. I mean, if he was going to lie, I would expect him to have come up with a more credible story, wouldn't you? Yes, I completely agree. I think he generally doesn't know what really happened himself. So we must do what we can to fill in the gaps. Yes, first and foremost, we need more information. Okay, let's go to the final one. Hold it! Um, what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's all the truth. As far as I was concerned, the body had been there until that point. And then suddenly, there it was. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first. Nothing more. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that it was Gregson. Hmm. Most curious circumstances indeed. How would the inspector, how the inspector was killed or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere? I have no idea. Objection. Surely the court has heard enough. My lord, the cross-examination has clearly revealed that the accused Barack Van Zeeks is lying on multiple fronts. What? What is that supposed to mean? Good gracious, counsel. The defendant is lying, you say? In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the room was dark. And you will know that Everything I say is true because my theme has become suddenly more badass. That's correct. No, that's impossible. As ruined by this candelabrum. How does that prove anything? If you examine the tip of the long candle, you can see it has been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firearm passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clearly a different length. Yes, I can see that only one, only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together, which begs the question of why only one has ended up longer than the others. That must be because that particular candle was extinguished when the others were still burning. Ah! That's right, when the candle was hit by the bullet, it obviously went out. But the other two candles would have still been burning. So the fact is, the victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candelabrum. 
and the accused claim that he couldn't see the body clearly contradicts those facts. And now, to the next lie. There's more? The accused also claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth! In that almost empty room, the police discovered something very unusual. A board carried from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. And on the other side of the board was a phrase. I ate my Lord Nibonese friend. I hate my Lord Nibonese friend. I ate my Lord Nibonese friend. Written over and over and over again in red ink. And with a lot of exclamation marks. Yes, that's right. We saw it too. It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged. However, they included a number of reports from various historical cases, the oldest of which was from 10 years ago. 10 years ago? This is starting to sound familiar. And this is a common, there's a common thread linking all the documents on that board. Indeed, what is the common thread, Gogs? They all relate to cases prosecuted in court by Barack Van Zeeks. All of them? And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. Good Lord! Interestingly, none of those defendants are alive today. Because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Ah! Oh no! In short, that dingy little room was the Reaper's secret hideout that is at his base of operations. The, the Reaper's hideout? And yet the Reaper would claim never to have been to his own secret hideout? No one would believe that. No, the truth is, we've been looking at this backwards. Backwards? Explain, Council. Inspector Gregson was investigating the, the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine. By the Reaper's hand. What? What? Order, order, order! Very well, I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Rock Van Zix is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered great service to his country. However, it is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Sogi's contention that the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark inconsistencies with the known facts. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Kazuma's doing a, a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing out on his experience as a, as a defense attorney to build his prosecution case, and it's formidable. Counsel, you will submit the board that you just showed to court's evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Thank you, my lord. Okay. And Brent. Ow! What's this? Mr. Naruto, look! Oh yes, it's a smudge of some kind. In fact, it looks just like a handprint. And the color! That's blood, isn't it? Oh, oh dear, how disturbing. Let's see the cases. There are details of, of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? The paper from 10 years ago is borrowing browning with age. Look. I have interest. The most recent thing appears to be this newspaper coming here. Oh, it's the same Red A League advertisement that Mr. Sholmes had picked out. And you remember, there was a Red Hair Beast at the scene too. Was Inspector Gregson an, an exponent of the Red Headed League then? And now the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. They were mentioned in the previous testimony too, if you remember. Yes, the street sellers who heard the gunshot went running into the room. Very well, lead the witnesses in. The defendant may step down from the witness stand. Certainly, my lord. Beepo has returned! Beepo's rampage will commence in 
do! So, witnesses, say your name and occupations for the courts. Names? We don't use names. Far too fast to be locked to us. We're just, free, we're just free and easy. Sell what we like, live where we want to live. Big powers are aggressive! Big powers went on the rampage! I ran over a dog in my omnibus and was fired as a result! Yeah, just Gina, her day got worse. She had Toby guarding the guarding basically the area outside the flat. Toby was basically just wandering the street. He saw a little piece of food. And then and then basically Beepo got aggressive. They ran fire Beepo! They never can rip Beepo! Boom! Toby, no! I give them all vacant stairs, and they will walk down face them. And I spend a few words of I do a pass for them. Pepe wants to live. Oh, would I be right assuming that all three of you make your living by selling wares on the street? Hey, <laughs> hey, everyone goes to be gossip. I show dirty little tidbits to bad buyers, you know. Dirty little tidbits. Go on, have you smash it for you, sir. Rob, you'll get on it, yes. Chick Jane is expensive to price and not very nice. Wait, your your app hair actually tries to sell to me now? Oh, go on, try. Don't tell me you're not interested. Tap, try the try the man. Give him the money and see what it is. Why don't you give him the money, Susada? I don't want to give him my money. We need to give him your money. Pay the man, Council. All right, all right. Six pence it is. You better go, John Dave. Got your disease on. Just between us, a young couple on Shite Street had just had twins. Um, is that it? No, that's not it. If Josh is it. It wants to spread, but that bit's up to you and your minds, of course. I've got more, you know, one, that juicy one. It's fancy amazing, it is, if you're curious. I am curious, yes, about what's going on just under that hat, that fat bottom lip of yours. Namely, that unusual bruise or whatever it is that's poking out from under your collar. What about the next witness, then? What name do you guys go by and what do you sell? Me, I'm Venus. Me, I'm Venus, and that's what everyone calls me. Funny, is it? I sell these lovely little fireworks to all the local school kids. Six pence a pop, what you say? You weren't exaggerating with the little. Do they actually sell? Oh, yes. The second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they get a hundred, they can blow up the school. Not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What did you say then, eh? Wanna part with six pence for a pop? Wait, what? You you want me to buy one? Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you can blow up the whole courtroom. Try the woman. Give her the money and see if she's right. Burn the woman council. Love how this, love how basically being extorted for money is basically Phoenix's family's pastime. All right, all right, I'll buy one. Lovely stuff. Right then, this is something a bit extra just for you. The Phoenix special, only six hundred pence. Six hundred. It's a hundred of my regular fireworks. Nothing illegal about that, is it? That's the default price! That's the default price for a hundred of them! And there'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the old Bailey, either. The Venus Firecracker has been entered into the court record. And the last witness! What name do you go by and what do you sell? I'm Beepo! Please! I'm desperate! Pay me six pence and I'll give you a handy right here! Uh, no, no! Pay the man, Council! Hey, give the man the money, Rianisuke! Pay him, Council! I I'm a thinker, me! Think all sorts of thoughts! Like I'm gonna run you down in my omnibus! They didn't take it away from me! I think therefore I am! Therefore I think I think! Because I said 
down the street. We're watching the world go by, and they call me the, obs the, the observator. Yeah, just ultimate. Yeah, basically, get this guy in a room with desk cards, and we would have the ultimate of debates, the ultimate philosophical debates upon the, the, upon the existence of oneself. Get out of here, man. I'm going to call you sandwich, and you're dying. So, you don't actually sell anything. Uh, b -b -b -rom -rom a b a b a b a b a b a b a a a a b a a you a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a well, we all have quite gas, it seems. They conduct their business on Fresno Street from morning until night, my lord. And always in the same place, directly adjacent to the crime scene. I see, and thus they heard the gunshot, I suppose. Not only that, but they, they very bravely ran to see what's going on. It witnessed the crime. Well, I'd be, I'd be beggared, I thought you had between us. Venus and Milo, what am I to do? I, what a terrible thing I saw. Well, what I think is, if we always, if, if all we want we see is the light and the shadow playing with us, is any of it real? Very well. The court will hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now, or in the next episode, because I think it would actually be a good time to end things off. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share it to where they want, without seeing you next time. Bye.